Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia, and today we're concluding our Jianwei's Northern Expeditions Let's Talk Lore series with episode 10, titled The Final Defeat. Before we get started, here's the answer to our trivia question from the end of our last episode. Now, we left off as we discussed Jianwei's reassignment from leading the Northern Expeditions to strengthening defenses at Hanzhong following another fruitless 10th Northern Expedition. Certainly, it was not as disastrous as his ninth attempt, where the Shuhan Sai suffered massive casualties, but with again nothing to show for yet another costly campaign in terms of supply cost in 258, the Shuhan court has simply lost all appetite to approve any additional northern expeditions. And speaking of the Shuhan court, there were now two factions emerging as political opponents to Jiangwei. On one side, there was the head eunuch Huang Hao, and the Yi province local gentry clans led by officials such as Qiao Zhou, who frequently argued to the emperor that Jiangwei's northern expeditions were bankrupting the kingdom, as they believed that a small kingdom such as Shu Han should behave within their means. This group would also eventually represent the pro-surrender faction within Shu Han. As to most Yi province gentry clans, the restoration of the Han was not as important to them as their own personal wealth and status. So when Shu Han can provide them wealth and status, they happily support Shu Han. But when Jiang Wei's northern expeditions were hurting their bottom lines, that support evaporates, and down the line, if Wei can promise them the same thing, they will also happily support Wei. Now, despite having all these voices constantly in his ears, Emperor Liu Shan knew his own legitimacy, comes from the restoration of the Han. So despite repeated pleas from Huang Hao to punish Jiang Wei and replace him, Liu Shan never budged and continued to support Jiang Wei as the Grand General. As for the likes of Qiao Zhou, who went as far as openly debating the merits of Jiang Wei's northern expeditions at court with the chief imperial secretariat Chen Zhi, who was more or less the head of the Shuhan court by this time, the emperor and the court could do very little, as Qiao Zhou concluded his debate by going home and writing a thesis that's called Chou Guo Lun in an effort to publish his thoughts to the world. Unfortunately for him, this particular thesis would get repeatedly trashed by future historians and scholars as a piece on defeatism and nationalistic betrayal. But this does go to show the divided state of the Shuhan court by this period. Additionally, there was also the rise of Zhuge Zhan and Dong Jue, who represented a youth movement within the Shuhan court. Zhuge Zhan, the leader of this group, was obviously the son of Zhuge Liang, and by 258, he had just turned 32 and was coming into his own politically as a faction that did support the Northern Expedition strategy, but they believed that Jiang Wei was not the right man to lead it. According to some sources, Zhuge Zhan wanted to personally lead the northern expeditions, but given his young age, it was more likely that he would go on to support the consensus choice in General Yan Yu instead. Either way, Jiang Wei didn't have many friends at court, but for the time being, as long as Jiang Wei didn't make any additional mistakes, there would be also no reason to replace him. Especially as he's only responsible for strengthening defenses in Hanzhong at this time. Now, knowing Jiang Wei, he was definitely not content with this task, as even when told to set a new defensive strategy, he would find a way to make it an aggressive one, as Jiang Wei would completely alter the traditional Shu Han strategy of preventing Wei's entry into the Hanzhong area into a much more ambitious and risky approach of open-door policy, where Wei attacks would be given free access into Hanzhong, now the strategy here is obviously not giving away Hanzhong, but rather to use the Hanzhong Valley as a trap. Looking back at previous Wei campaigns against Hanzhong, the Shu Han defense had always been able to block them at the exit of the mountain path and trap them inside, whether it was during Cao Zhen's or Cao Shuang's attempts. But in both campaigns, the Shu Han side was not able to inflict heavy casualties on the Wei side, as those same narrow mountain path prevented effective pursuit of the enemy troops. So now under Jiang Wei's new defensive plan, the Wei army would be allowed into Hanzhong and then trapped there, 
as the Shu Han side would still defend at key choke points inside and around Hanzhong to prevent Wei infiltration deep into Shu Han heartland. This way, the Wei forces would have to overextend their supply lines that can then be easily targeted, and if the Wei forces want to retreat, there would now be a heavy bottleneck at the mountain path entrance, and the Shu Han forces could then easily score a much bigger victory against the Wei side and inflict more casualties. Now, for the purpose of this Let's Talk lore series, we're not going to dwell too much on the merits or issues with this defensive plan, as we'll have plenty of chance to look at it in action in a future Let's Talk lore series covering the fall of Shu Han. All we need to establish now is that Jiang Wei greatly altered the Shu Han defensive approach in Han Zhong in 258, and the Shu Han court was actually quite pleased with these changes as they too agreed with Jiang Wei's rationale behind these changes in approach. Now, for the next four years, Jiang Wei would lay low to let the political backlash against his northern expeditions wane. But during this period, with the death of many of the more senior members of the Shu Han court, such as the chief imperial secretariat Chen Zhi, who died of natural causes in 259, there would be less and less officials capable of standing up to the rise in power of the head eunuch Huang Hao, as the likes of Zhuge Zhan and Dong Jue, who would go on to replace Chen Zhi as the head of the imperial secretariat, were simply too young as they cowered against Huang Hao out of fear that Huang Hao would speak ill of them in front of the emperor. The only person who tried to stand up to Huang Hao in this period would actually be Jiang Wei, who straight up asked Emperor Liu Shan to execute Huang Hao in 262, as Jiang Wei argued that Huang Hao was a bad and corrupt influence on the court. Naturally, Emperor Liu Shan did not execute his favor eunuch in Huang Hao, as he ended up merely forcing Huang Hao to apologize to Jiang Wei publicly, as Liu Shan would go on to dismiss the request as a simple misunderstanding between the two of them. However, Huang Hao didn't see it that way, as he started to ramp up his effort to lobby for the demotion of Jiang Wei and replacing him with General Yan Yu, who we discussed earlier who was currently in charge of the Shu Han Eastern defenses at Yong'an at this time, as a replacement for Jiang Wei. Now, while Emperor Liu Shan did not listen to Huang Hao's request, Jiang Wei felt the political danger, as he would get out of Chengdu the first chance he got when he requested to set up a Tun Tian farm with his troops at Ta Zhong. Now, once at Ta Zhong, Jiang Wei couldn't help himself, as he would see an opportunity to launch his final and 11th northern expedition in late fall of 262 as the Shu Han army would march north once again into Longxi, targeting the Tall River crossing at a place called Taoyang. Unfortunately for Jiang Wei, the four-year break between his 10th and 11th northern expedition would dull the blade of the Shu Han army while sharpening the blade of the Wei forces out west who have now been trained for years under the capable command of the Wei general Deng Ai. Faced with Jiang Wei's northern expedition again, Deng Ai would astutely analyze the terrain and place his army in formation on the east bank of the Tall River at a place called Hou He. Here, Jiang Wei's army would clash directly with Deng Ai's army out on the open field, and in a rare occurrence in an open field conflict between the two sides, the Wei army would come out ahead as Deng Ai's army would easily crush Jiang Wei's forces, once again dealing massive casualties to a Shu Han side that could ill afford any more losses. After this defeat, Jiang Wei would retreat back to Ta Zhong and refuse summons to go back to Chengdu out of fear that this defeat would be used against him in a final effort to strip him of his military command. While Jiang Wei worried about his own court, Little did he know that after his defeat at Hou He, the Wei court, now firmly under the control of Sima Zhao, would officially start plotting a five-pronged massive invasion of Shu Han, as it was evident that Shu Han's power were in decline, especially following Jiang Wei's two massive defeats at the hands of Deng Ai in two of the three final northern expeditions launched within the last five years. And with the completion of Jiang Wei's final northern expedition, our series here 
on Jiang Wei's northern expeditions will also be coming to an end. But before we sign off here, I want to just take a moment to share some of my thoughts on Jiang Wei's northern expeditions in totality. In my opinion, the Kingdom of Shu Han, as a political entity, exists entirely based on the premise of Han restoration and continuation. Therefore, war with Wei, the usurper of the Han dynasty, is a political necessity to justify the need for Shu Han's existence. Likewise, from a Wei perspective, the Han abdicated the throne and thus the mandate of heaven to them. Therefore, it is also politically impossible for them to allow such a rogue continuation of the previous dynasty to continue to exist. So in short, mutual coexistence between the kingdom of Shuhan and Wei is simply impossible. Given this fact, for a smaller kingdom in Shuhan to have any chance of winning against a larger foe in Wei, the only approach is to take small bites. And these northern expeditions, whether under Zhuge Liang or Jiang Wei, were attempting exactly that. And for a long time, I would argue, they were largely successful in doing so. Certainly, many like to point out at the supply costs and manpower costs for Shu Han, and claim that it contributed heavily to the fall of Shu Han. But one forgets that resources and manpower are expended by both sides in any given war, and by any measure, the Wei side was paying much more for the defenses of the western provinces than Shu Han was for launching these northern expeditions, especially during Jiang Wei's attempts, where the Shu Han side was committing very little troops and supplies, as Jiang Wei essentially never got a proper supply line, like Zhuge Liang did, and had to rely mostly on raiding Wei supplies. But with all that said, the two crushing defeats against Deng Ai during Jiang Wei's final three northern expeditions, were the final nails in the coffin for Jiang Wei and the Shu Han side, and for that, Jiang Wei should take a fair share of the blame for these losses, even though I would argue that overall, the northern expedition strategy itself was never the issue. Now, as we conclude our series here, hopefully you all have enjoyed this episode and the series enough to consider subscribing to the channel for more content on Three Kingdoms history, or simply support the channel with a like or a comment below. And as always, I'll see you all next time. Bye!